Welcome. In today's video, we're going over how to measure your height accurately in three simple ways. Let's begin. So first, I want to start with some rules because accuracy matters a lot. One, you want to be barefoot, so no socks, no shoes. You don't want a hat or a beanie at all. And you want your feet to be completely flat, like in this picture. Two, you want to face away from the object taking your measurement. So if you're using a wall or you're using a meter stick, you want your back, your butt, and your heels on the wall when you're measuring. Three, the time of day matters because we've got something called morning versus night height. Your spinal discs will compress and they will shrink over the course of the day. So I suggest that you measure right before bed. So that's your night height. But if you want, you could also measure your morning height 30 seconds right out of bed. Four, the floor surface should be even and hard. If it's even, that means you can place a ball in the middle of the floor and the ball won't roll away because the floor is perfectly level. And if the floor is hard, basically it doesn't have any carpet or spongy floors, then that means your feet won't sink into the floor as you're measuring, which is perfect. So method one, this is my absolute favorite. It takes five seconds. You need a book, a pencil, and a tape measure. So you take a hardcovered book, short side on the wall, like so, and you want that 90 degree angle because that ensures that the measurement is perfectly straight and everything is flat. Then you slide the book down along the wall and you mark with the pencil. So do what this guy's doing, except face away from the wall, like in this diagram. Then you just measure with a ruler, a tape measurement, or you can even use a piece of paper if you need to get creative, in America at least. Papers are eight and a half inches by 11 inches. And as a last resort, you can even use your wall tiles if you know how long each tile is. Next, we've got statiometers. This is the current one that I'm using. It's also the ones that doctors use. And I've calibrated mine where the measurement that I take off of a wall using the book and pencil method matches up to my statiometer reading perfectly. I've also bought ultrasonic stadiometers. These basically send a pulse of sound, like a, a wave down to the ground, and then it bounces back and it measures that time it took. And based on how accurately it can measure that speed, it will measure your height. So these can be off by one to two centimeters sometimes, but the ones that I bought have been fairly accurate, especially when matched against my wall measurements. These are of medium cost. They cost about $30 to $40. I'll link them down below if you want to check them out. Lastly, you can DIY your own statiometer. This is kind of like the book and pencil method, except the tape measure is on the board already. You basically stand on the platform and you lower this piece of wood onto your head, just like the book and pencil method. And then you can immediately see your measurement. This takes all the friction out of measuring your height, and this allows you to do it more consistently, which is why I recommend it. Lastly, we've got method three, which is on the floor measurements. So some walls are designed weird, this one especially. So some walls just don't go flat all the way down to the ground. It's probably to protect the integrity of the wall, but this makes it hard to measure yourself properly. Just Think about the Pythagorean theorem, you're measuring the hypotenuse rather than the height of the triangle. First, I would suggest trying the book method lying down, feet and head on a flat object. So pictured here, we've got this guy, uh, he flipped the table over and his feet are flat on the table. And if he didn't have this little bump on the wall, and if his knees weren't bent, then he'd be doing it perfectly. But this is just to show you visually what it might look like. So book and pencil method, but on the floor. And if you don't have walls, but you do have the sun and a tape measure, then you can try the shadow method. This one is kind of convoluted, but you basically measure your shadow. So you can DIY this with two rocks, measure the top and the bottom of your shadow, just kind of mark them with rocks. And then your real height will be your shadow height times some sort of ruler height divided by that ruler's shadow height. So you can check this little diagram right here. We're basically solving for that angle and then accounting for that angle in terms of your shadow height. These may seem logical in terms of measuring your height, but they will lead to inaccuracies 
and you may be demotivated or you may be elated just because the measurement skews so far one way or the other based on these incorrect measurements. Starting with number one, we've got stacking things of known heights. This is usually time intensive and it requires a perfect stack. It also requires that each of the individual items, like let's say you were stacking water bottles or protein canisters or even boxes, all those boxes have to be made perfectly, right? They have to be this, should be the same dimension, shape, height, and they should all stack properly with no gap in between. This is pretty unrealistic, so I'd avoid this. We've also got taking pictures with some sort of object of a known height and then using a software to measure your height. Now this can be accurate if done in the right conditions, but for most people, there's a lot of room for error. There's lens distortion, there's angles that have to be considered. There's even calibration issues if you're not using an iPhone. Third, we've got LiDAR and AR apps. So LiDAR just uses lasers. AR stands for augmented reality. So this would usually be with your phone camera. Again, it shares the inaccuracies of these three things right here. Lens distortion, angles, calibration issues. Lastly, measuring your wingspan, your arms basically, from fingertips to fingertips. This one usually differs from your actual height. And a lot of people who do hanging from bars, at least when they're younger, they have a longer wingspan or they're just genetically predisposed to a longer wingspan. And some people have shorter wingspans. So this may not always correctly reflect your actual height. With that said, thank you so much for hanging out. Like and sub for more. Peace.